Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. You know, friends, one of those Oscars, if it was given to a breakfast cereal, you can just see that Oscar zooming to a delicious, malty rich grape nuts flake. For when it comes to America's fastest growing breakfast cereal, the verdict you hear is unanimous. Grape Nuts Flakes really taste swell. Yes, whether you're breakfast fussy or whether you're just plain breakfast hur- hungry, you'll say that Grape Nuts Flakes satisfy. They have such a grand, malty richness, such a glorious, crisp, tempting goodness. They bring you the flavor of Grape Nuts in exciting toasted flake form. And Grape Nuts Flakes bring you health building whole grain nourishment, including proteins, minerals, and vitamins. So help yourself to health at breakfast. Help yourself to sweet as a nut, luscious grape nuts flakes in the big 12-ounce economy size package. You don't give up a single precious ration stamp to buy grape nuts flakes. Fun played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, our dear old master of ceremonies, Jack Benny, lost $50 recently on Rochester's horse, Burnt Cork. That's right. They pulled the Kentucky Derby right down over my ears. <laughs> you always wear a derby that way. Quiet. Ever since this disastrous experience, Mr. Benny has been trying and trying to forget, but to no avail. What do you mean, to no avail? I've forgotten the whole thing. When I lose money, that's the end of it. Go on. You lost your piggy bank when you were just a little baby, and you're still running ads in the Waukegan paper. (laughs) (laughs) What (laughs) ads? Lost. One piggy bank on Genesee Street. Finer may keep bank, but owner has sentimental attachment to content. <laughs> now, Mary. Please return to Jackie Benny, age 45, Hollywood, California. That's who made up. <laughs> go on. Go on with the story, Don. Well, anyway, folks, Rochester returned from Louisville a week ago. But until yesterday afternoon, Jack was unable to get in touch with him. I should have known he was hiding down on Central Avenue. So now, without further ado, we would like to take you to one of Central Avenue's delightfully intimate mixed drinkeries. The time late yesterday afternoon. Stay away! Uh, Mississippi Barbecue Palace. Mr. Sippy speaking. <laughs> I see. Now, Mr. Sippy, I'm trying to get in touch with Rochester. Rochester Van Jones. Oh, you mean the man whose horse has caused no end of unbalanced budgets in this vicinity? <laughs> I lost plenty on him, too. Now, is Rochester there? Uh, just a minute, I'll find out. Oh, Rochester? Rochester. What is it, Sippy? Is that Mr. Benny? Uh, yeah. What am I telling? Same thing! Same thing! Okay. Wrong number. Goodbye. <laughs> you know, Sippy, that was a narrow escape. Yeah. Say, how many days have you been hiding out from Mr. Benny? Four that I can remember and two that must have been sheer bliss. <laughs> Say, Sippy, I was supposed to meet Louis Armstrong here. Have you seen him? Old Fatchamo? Here he comes now. Off the lazy river with the old mill run. Well, look here. Hello, Rod. Hello, Seth. <laughs> well, where are the gals, Seth? I thought you were going to come loaded. Don't worry, son. I got two gals coming over here in a little while that are tall, tan, tantalizing, and tender. <laughs> <laughs> are they good looking? Mine is. Yours is sort of a retread. Now, <laughs> uh, wait a minute, Seth. I should have the good-looking one. I'm a romantic man. Romantic? You heard me. When I kiss a gal, Cupid just stands there and says, My, my. <laughs> I'm Taurus. Oh, you dog. <laughs> Say, Rats, an important thought has just struck me. What are we going to do for money tonight? You know, legal lettuce. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, Sats, you got money. I had money until that horse of yours devolved and thawed me. <laughs> that race if it hadn't been for the back stretch. What happened in the back stretch? He just rolled over on his back and stretched. <laughs> well, look, Rochester, we got a hold. We got to get hold of some stuff for tonight, and I got a hunch that those gals are going to be hungry. Yeah, well, it looks like I'll have to call Mr. Benny, my favorite comedian. <laughs> oh, you dog, you. Uh, give me that phone, Sippy. Oh, uh, here you are. Thanks. Hello, operator, give me Crestview 7071. From Natchez to Mobile. What? I can't dial, miss. I got a highball in each hand. <laughs> From Memphis to St. Joe, wherever the four winds blow. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny? Well, well, so it's you. What happened to you, boss? Where you been? <laughs> Where have I been? I've been on the phone for the last six days trying to reach you. I called every hotspot on Central Avenue that's got a telephone. Some of the best ones is primitive. <laughs> Rochester, I don't want any flippancies. I want the truth. You've been back from Louisville a week now. Why haven't I heard from you? Well, last Tuesday, I was right up to the door of your house in Beverly Hills, ready to work. Uh-huh. And just as I was about to enter, a black cat crossed my path. I see. Well, couldn't you walk around the cat? I did and wound up at the cotton club. <laughs> oh, well, so much, so much for Tuesday. Now, what happened Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? I don't even remember where they happened. <laughs> I thought so. Now, look, Rochester, I want you to be at my house first thing tomorrow morning. Okay, boss, I'll be there. You better. Uh, by the way, Mr. Benny, a financial predicament has reared its ugly head. <laughs> I'm in desperate need of, say, about uh, $25. I see. Well, let me ask you something, Rochester. Why should I give you $25 when I just lost 50 on your horse? Well, come on. Rochester, I want an answer to that question. It ain't ready yet. <laughs> now, listen, Rochester, I'll give you the money on one condition, that you come over here right now and start a work. The house is a mess. Okay, I'm on my way, boss. So long. Goodbye. Now, listen, Satch, you keep the gals here. I'll run over to see Mr. Benny, put on the personality, and be back in a half an hour. Rochester, you forgot to hang up the phone. Uh-oh. Oh, oh Rochester. <laughs> yes, boss. I heard your conversation. Don't you believe it? <laughs> Get over here. Goodbye. Satch, I'm in the doghouse. That's where you belong, you old dog. <laughs> well, I better get over to Mr. Benny's house. So long, Sippy. Uh, good luck, Rochester. Say, Satch, while you're waiting for the gals, why don't you get up there with the band and give out a little jive for the cats? Okay, I might float on down that old lazy river for a few balls. Let's float, boys. Let's go. Lazy River, where the old mill runs. Up the Lazy River, with the noonday sun. Singing in the shade of a kind old tree. Throw away your troubles, dream a dream of me, dream a dream of me. Up the Lazy River, where the robin sung. Two bright lights as we stroll along. Two skies up above. The one I love Of the lazy river How happy we will be My love Oh
up the lazy river. Oh, you river. Mm, you river. Boo ba da dee 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 dee. Boo ba dee dee. Boo ba dee 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 dee. gentlemen, two hours have elapsed since our last scene. We take you now to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills, where he is busy dictating to his secretary. Take it away, Beverly Hills. However, madam, if you will send me 50 cents in cash or stamps. <laughs> I will be glad. <laughs> I like to laugh so quick. I will be glad to send you one dozen personally autographed naval oranges. Plus one large grapefruit with my picture pasted on it. Sign that as usual. Your dream man, Jack Benny. <laughs> Is there any more fan mail, Miss Livingston? Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Will you stop with that Miss Livingston? Why don't you call me Mary? Because every Saturday afternoon you're supposed to be my secretary. And I don't believe in familiarity. Then why are you sitting on my lap? <laughs> because you don't know how to type. <laughs> Now, is there, any more, is there any more fan mail? Yes, here's a letter from a lady in Nobody, Montana. Nobody? That's North Butte. <laughs> what's the, uh... What's the... <laughs> what's the lady got to say? Uh, dear Mr. Benny, those oranges you sent me were a little sour. Also your photograph, also your program last Sunday. <laughs> I'll have to spray those oranges. Also my writer. <laughs> Now, let's see. How will I, uh... Well, it's the big racehorse man again. Say, Mr. Benny, I made your bed, shined your shoes, and changed the oil on your toupee. Good. Can I have that $25 loan now? Rochester, I'm not giving you any money just because you got a date with a couple of girls tonight. Oh, I forgot all about them, boys. But tomorrow's Mother's Day, and I want that $25 to buy Mammy a, a geranium. <laughs> <laughs> a ga a geranium? Uh, well, you should get quite a geranium for twenty-five dollars. Oh, it ought to be huge. <laughs> well, listen, Mister Van Jones, the kitchen sink is full of dirty dishes. Now go do them. I just got a manicure. I don't care. Do those dishes. Manicure. He thinks he's going out stepping tonight. He's crazy. But, Jack, it isn't Rochester's fault that you lost money on his horse. That phony fortune teller told you to make the bet. You mean Princess Korsakoff at the tea room? Give me that phone, Mary. I'm going to call her up and give her a piece of my mind. Oh, darn it. Have you got a nickel, Mary? Here you are. Thanks. <laughs> a pay phone in a private house. That's the darnest thing I ever heard of. <laughs> Well, it saves a lot of bookkeeping and sending people bills. And... <laughs> I hope the princess doesn't... Hello? Hello. Anna Hines, Gypsy Tea Room. Hines speaking. <laughs> Where's Anna? She ain't Hines. <laughs> now, cut that out. <laughs> I want to... Thank heaven I won't have to look at him much longer. Listen, I want to speak... I want to speak... <laughs> I'm only kidding. I want to speak to Princess Korsakoff, your fortune teller. She can't come to the phone right now. She got her head caught in a teacup. <laughs> Put the princess on the phone, teacup and all. Okay, Blue Eye. I got two of them. That's right. <laughs> Just because I'm a comedian, everybody. Gets... Hello? Hello, Princess Korsakoff. I'm hot as a pistol when I look in my crystal talking. <laughs> look, Princess, you gave me some fine advice when you told me to bet on Rochester's horse. According to the radio, the newsreels, and the papers that came in last. It couldn't be propaganda. <laughs> no, it couldn't. Now, listen, Princess, you're a phony, and from now on, I'm eating at another restaurant. Who's a phony? I said you'd be president of the Elks, didn't I? Elks? You said I'd be president of the United States. There was mayonnaise on my crystal. It works better now. <laughs> oh, well, president of the Elks isn't bad. I'll tell you what, Princess, I'll be over for lunch tomorrow. What's the special? Leg of lamb with nylon stockings. <laughs> Fine, I'll bring a girl. Goodbye, Princess. 
You know, Mary Princess Korsakoff is a wonderful woman. She says I'm going to be president of the Elks. I'll have to buy a tooth for my watch chain. Why don't you get a few for your gums while you're at it? <laughs> no, save that for the program. Say, I don't hear any activity in the kitchen. Oh, Rochester, how are you coming along with the dishes? Oh, fine, boss. I'm just stacking them up now. Good. You know, Mary, Princess Korsakoff may have her fall. But... Every dish in the kitchen. No, I didn't, boss. The soup terrain is okay. Thank heaven. Of course, it's going to leak a little now. <laughs> Rochester, those dishes are coming out of your next week's salary. Now go upstairs and press my blue suit. I'm going out with the boys tonight. Yes, sir. Hey, where do you fellas go every Saturday night? We have a bowling team. It's a lot of fun and good exercise. Well, here's Dennis now. Hello, kid. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hi, Dennis. Fine, Miss Livingston. Hey, Mr. Benny, are we going to the... You know what, tonight? Quiet, kid. Yes, as soon as Don and Phil get here. Oh, boy, I hope... What do you call it is still there? Quiet, quiet, kid. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you fellas going? Every Saturday night, we go downtown to the burlesque show. <laughs> Dennis. The burlesque show? Mary and Morgan, more curves than the Burma Road. <laughs> Dennis, save that whistling for the theater. Say, Dennis, what's that box you got under your arm? Oh, you'll laugh. No, no, I won't. What is it? Well, tomorrow is Mother's Day, and Mr. Benny has always been like a mother to me, so I brought him a box of chocolate. <laughs> well, well. Mother Benny. So Mother's taking you to the burlesque show tonight, eh, Sonny? <laughs> Yeah, isn't she sweet? <laughs> now, Mary, don't spoil it. Dennis gave me a box of chocolates. It was a very sentimental gesture, and I appreciate it. Thanks, Dennis. You're welcome. But you know, kid, I haven't always been sweet to you. In fact, once in a while, I'm, I'm very mean. I know. One of the chocolates has a Mickey in it. <laughs> a Mickey? Yeah, it tastes a little like maple nuts. How do you know? I had one Thursday, and I didn't wake up till this morning. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll watch out for Maple. Now, speaking of Mother's Day, Dennis, have you got a song that ties into the occasion for the program tomorrow? Yes, I'm going to sing Little Mother of Mine. Would you like to hear it? Yes, I would. I'll sit down at the piano here and make off like an orchestra. Don't spoil the illusion. Sing, kid. See, this candy looks good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, 
That, uh, that song was swell, Dennis. It'll be very good on the program tomorrow. Thank you. How do you like the way I played the orchestra? Oh, you were marvelous. <laughs> anyway, kid, that's a great number for Mother's Day. Uh, speaking of Mother's Day, Jack, I sent Papa a check for $100. $100 to your father? On Mother's Day? She'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, yes, you're... Your mother's a pretty big woman. She's taller than your father, isn't she? Only two or three feet. <laughs> well, that's enough. Say, boss, that pressure blue suit, how's it look? Fine. Now take it off and hang it in the closet. <laughs> okay. You always have to model everything. What a guy. Uh-oh, 8.30. Can I have that $25 now, boss? I gotta get down to Central Avenue and buy that geranium for my mother. $25 for a geranium? Now let's analyze this. How could you possibly pay $25 for a geranium? I got a florist that takes advantage of me. <laughs> oh, you have to go to him. Now, go take that suit off. Yes, sir. You know, Mary, if Rochester would only come right out and say that he wants $25 to entertain a couple of girls, it would be different. You mean you'd give him the money? No, but he wouldn't be lying to me. <laughs> That's different enough for me, you know. Well, it's Don and Phil. Hiya, fellas. Hello, everybody. Hiya, gang. Say, Mary, I'm sorry you can't come along with us. Us guys are going, uh, we're going bowling. She knows, she knows. <laughs> Dennis had to spill the beans. I didn't have to do it. I'm just stupid. <laughs> you said it. Say, Phil, did you have any trouble getting out of the house tonight? Nah, it was easy. But you'll notice I got a club foot. <laughs> Well, of course, that kills my next line entirely, you know? My next line is, but then you've only been wearing shoes since your band started playing indoors. I love when they ad-lib. My next line means nothing, you know? Phil, now I want to show you the difference in the joke. Phil, do the original it line. Okay. Where are you going to start? Up the I top? say, Phil, didn't you have any trouble getting out of the house tonight? Nah, it was easy, but you'll notice I haven't got any shoes on. Oh, yes, but then you've only been wearing shoes since your band started playing indoors. <laughs> See the I difference, like folks? <laughs> Phil, why didn't you tell Alice you were going to a concert or something? Oh, it's all right with her if I go out with you guys. I bought her a beautiful pair of mules for Mother's Day. Oh, bedroom slippers? No, mules. Jacastas. Jacastas. <laughs> I've got a victory garden to plow. Oh, real? Oh, I see. You can't then. Yes, you can. Oh, real news, huh? <laughs> well, that's, uh, mules. That's a very touching gift. I named them Jack and Jerk after you. <laughs> Thanks. I expected as much. Well, oh, while we're on the subject of Mother's Day, Jack, uh, do you know what I sent my mother in Denver, Colorado? No, Don. What did you send your mother? A whole case of America's fastest growing flake cereal. Maldi rich, toasty brown, sweet as a nut, great nut flakes. Well, that's a wonderful gift. And I enclosed a little note that said, uh, Dear Mother, remember the day the stork brought me? There I was, just a 12-ounce economy-sized package. 12-ounce? <laughs> Don, if you only weighed 12 ounces, how come the stork went right from your house to Murrieta Hot Springs? <laughs> He's been grounded ever since. <laughs> but that was a nice present, Don. I'm sure your mother will appreciate it. Well, Mary, you'll have to excuse us now. Come on, fellas, let's go downtown. Oh, wait a minute. Here comes that silly boarder of yours. Oh, yes, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Billingsley. Good evening, Mr. Benny. Stepping out, I see. <laughs> yes, yes, my friends and I are going downtown in bowl. I was there last night. He's lovely. <laughs> Yes, yes, she is. Uh, would you care to ride downtown with us, Mr. Billing, please? No, thanks. I'm going upstairs and hit the hay. Going to bed, eh? No, I'm going to hit the hay. I'm mad at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Well, good night, Mr. Benny. Good night. There's very few of us left. <laughs> Going upstairs and hit the hay. I was wondering why he was carrying that shillelagh. Come on, fellas, let's go. Now, Rochester, when I get home tonight, I'll expect you to be here. But, boss, what about the $25 for my mother's geranium? Rochester, I know you're not telling the truth. If that $25 is really for your mother, you could... Uh... Uh-oh, I'll get it, boss. Uh, hello, Rochester. Uh, look here, man. The gals are here. What's keeping you? Oh, 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 oh! Hello, mother! <laughs> mother? How are you, mother? How you been? What's the matter with you, Rod? This is Satchmo. I know. Now, now concentrate, Mammy. I'll be down in a little while with $25 for those geraniums. 
Geranium? Oh, I get it. You dog. <laughs> What's that, Nader? <laughs> Just a minute, I'll find out. Say, Mr. Benny. Uh, what is it, Rochester? Can I have tonight off? Mother's having a little birthday supper for us children. Well, I think it might be, uh... uh give me that phone, Rochester. But, boss... Give me that phone. I want to talk to your mother. <laughs> but she don't speak English. <laughs> give me that phone. Okay. Hello, Mrs. Van Jones. Are you there, Mrs. Van Jones? Oh, yes, Mr. Benny. <clears throat> <laughs> By the way, Mrs. Van Jones. Yes? A Rochester tells me that you're having a little buffet supper tonight for your children. Are your daughters there yet? They've just arrived. Well, tell me, Mrs. Van Jones, are your daughters good looking? Mine is. <laughs> I thought so. Well, I'm letting Rochester off, Satchmo, but you'll have to dig up the $25 yourself. Goodbye. Okay, Rochester, you can have the night off, but don't kid yourself. You didn't fool me, brother. <laughs> Friends, we can't talk too often about the shining new beacon light to better wartime living, Uncle Sam's Basic 7 food program. The Basic 7 was created by our government to ensure a better fed and hence more efficient America. Uncle Sam says, here are seven basic groups of food, foods you should have every day for robust health and ready energy. Choose your favorite food from each group. See that your folks get at least one food from all seven groups every day. Featured in the basic seven are whole grain cereals, such as crisp, toasty brown grape nut flakes, a basic seven food that's not rationed. For grape nut flakes are a whole grain cereal, providing nourishment of wheat and barley, including precious minerals and vitamins. So please, Uncle Sam, and please your family. Eat the basic seven daily and eat grape nut flakes. Remember, it doesn't take a single precious ration stamp to buy thrifty Grape Nuts Flakes. 